Wings for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Wyoming. I want to start with a question for you all, okay? By raise of hands, <coughs> and you don't raise your hand because I don't think you're telling this to now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> By raise of hands, how many of you have children, grandchildren, nieces, or nephews, or you know a child, or maybe you saw a child somewhere in the last week. Anyone? Ah, excellent. And I have the correct audience. All right. Boys and Girls Clubs are programs that provide out of school time activities, targeted programs um, for youth ages 5 through 18. And we'll talk a little bit more in a little while about who we are, what we do, but before we get to that point, I simply want to introduce my pals who are here with me today. You all know Mary Axnell. She has been an absolute uh, treasure to us at the club and in, in helping to connect us with what's going on in Riverton and to get this whole thing started and, and flowing. Um, but also in the back in the maroon is Amy Crawford. And Amy is our events coordinator. And we'll be talking in a little while about this wonderful event that we have coming up in April honoring Mary Margaret. And then over here in the purple shirt is Reed Barr, and he's our resource development coordinator for this evening. Um, so if you had any questions during or after, please be sure to grab one of us. We'd love to tell you all about the club and what we have going on. So the mission of the Boys and Girls Clubs is it's a national organization, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, but it's always important for me to let folks know that although we are connected to Boys and Girls Clubs of America, we actually are our own autonomous organization. We're our own 501c3 with the board of directors and advisory <coughs> councils in each of the communities where we serve, and we're able to make our own decisions. As a born and raised Wyomingite, that's important to me, right? I like to be able to make decisions that are best for my community. But what's really great about what we get to do is we get to make decisions that are best for each of the communities that we serve. Our mission is to enable all young people, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. And we do that in a lot of ways. I'll get to that in just a little while. But one of the questions that consistently comes up is who are the youth who need us most. And while in many communities, those youth are those that we would consider from disadvantaged circumstances, they need that after school care. But this I think is a perfect picture of the kind of kiddos that need the club. Because I say, all youth need the club. So this is my daughter. This is her friend, Jazz, okay? These two children couldn't be more different. Not only because the one on the right does everything perfectly well and leads and, and, and leads the way, and the other one would, could care less about the rules. <laughs> Not just that. Um, but Kieran comes from a home where both parents are present, both parents work, her parents are financially stable. Um, she has extended family, some of which right here in this very town, that love on her and provide opportunities for her. Kieran gets to go on trips and museums and have all kinds of different experiences in her life. She goes to a fantastic school where she receives high grades um, and she's always curious, always learning, always ready for more opportunity. Jazz, on the other hand, although he is a very precocious young man, and I do have his father's permission to be telling his story. Um, Jazz comes from a single parent home. His dad works very hard at sometimes two and three jobs just to provide for he and Jazz. He has no family in our area. The rest of his family is all in Kansas City and dad sometimes works late into the evening. Both of these children need the club. And here's why, because my daughter, although She's not disadvantaged, she'll tell you. She uses some products, she's not. Um, she needs the club because her parents both work full time. I don't know what I would do for my children if I didn't have the club myself. Where would my children go after school? I would probably be paying a lot of money to send them to a daycare or somewhere else that isn't geared toward their specific needs as 10 and seven year olds, right? Um, Jazz needs the club because that's the place he needs to be so dad can earn a living. Jazz needs the club because there's a meal there and homework help and extra opportunities that Jazz may not otherwise have the opportunity to participate in. So both of these children, as different as they may seem, actually both are children that are perfect examples of why a child needs the club. I always say every child needs the club. And when my kids come home absolutely exhausted from the club, I'm especially thankful that my children come to the club, right? 
So here's who we are. <clears throat> Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Wyoming. We're, um, we're, our central location is in Casper, um, but we actually have served 10 club sites in four different counties. We have a club site in Glen Rock over in Commerce County, a club site in Buffalo, seven in Casper, including a junior high and a high school and five elementary programs in Casper. And then recently we merged with Boys and Girls Clubs of Boys and Girls Club of Dubois. So we actually have a club already here in Fremont County doing very well. Um, mostly serving junior high students actually down in school time because they have a program at their elementary school for elementary ages, but the gap and the need there was for middle school. Um, so that's one of the things that we love to do as a club is to, to enter communities or to, uh, while we're present into communities, find the things that are needed in that community and fill the gap. We don't want to compete. For example, in Casper, we have a really solid nationally recognized sports program, but you all, you have Mary. Right? You have our rec. You don't need us to come into this community and provide sports activities because you already have something fantastic going on. We want to be able to come into communities and to support what's already happening and to partner and really help to fill those gaps. So these are the numbers. I'm a data girl. Anybody else like data? Numbers? My people. Yes. I love numbers and data, not because they're just numbers, but because these numbers, they represent the lives that we're able to impact. So we have about 3,000 annual members across all our 10 sites. We'll see four to 500 kids a day in after school programming. In the summer, that goes up to about six to 700 kiddos a day that come to the club each day. Um, in a single day, we, we serve sometimes up to 1,000 youth in our after school programs, but then also through our sports programs in a couple of our communities. Through our outreach efforts into schools, we have our staff will go in and run programs in schools, they'll go in and run reading programs, they'll even go and run activities at recess with some of the kids. Our Cowboy Ethics Outreach, um, does anybody has heard of Cowboy Ethics? It's the, actually the Wyoming State Code of Ethics. Mm -hmm. It's a book written by Jim Owen, it was adopted in 2010 as the Wyoming State Code of Ethics. As far as I know, we were the first and still the only state that has adopted any such code for the entire state. We actually created it at the blessing of the, the author of that book, a youth program that now has reached about 60,000 youth and has been trained in, in over, over 14 states to youth leaders across the nation. We run that in every one of our clubs. Um, our Wyotown Financial Literacy Center, where youth from all over the state come into our, into be able to run their own little town. They do work in their schools and then they come run town and club and through homeschool PE classes, which we actually do in three of our communities for our homeschool community as well. Again, a place where we were able to see a gap and we were able to fill that gap for those students. So those are just, that's a basic overview of some of the ways that we reach out into communities. I'll get a little bit more specific in a little while. This is the number that I love. It's my favorite number. I, I get to find this number every year. In 2019, we actually served 11,292 youth in all of our communities. That means kids who participated in the club that were members, kids who participated in other activities like the outreach into the schools and all that, over 11,000 kiddos in four counties. Um, our goal, according to our other vice president, is every child in the state. We're not quite there. We're gonna get there. At some point, we were gonna get there. So how did we get here? How did we get to Riverton? So actually for several years, about once a quarter, we'd have somebody call us and say, hey, how do we get a Boys and Girls Club in, in Riverton? And the things just, things never really seemed to line up. Back in 2018, we started, we got more and more interest and things started to align. And so we just came to the community. One of the things I actually enjoy doing, I know it's weird, is strategic planning. And so we came into the community and I think some of you may have even been there and we did just a, a, a discussion. What does Riverton mean? What are some of the needs here in Riverton? And my CEO and I kind of led that conversation. One of the things that came from that was a community calendar. Do you remember that, Bethany? And I believe that's happened, correct? On the we're working on another Yeah, page. and when we're, so the community calendar piece was one. one. And the other piece was, where, where are kids going in their out of school time? What's happening? And so we said, well, we actually happen to know a little bit about after school. So we came and, and did interviews with 33 individuals in, in, in Riverton. That's everyone from school district personnel, parents, politicians, business owners, the gamut. You, you name it, we, we talked to folks. Chief of police at the time, trying to think of who, else, who all else we, we chatted with. And the question we asked every time, that I'm going to ask you all, is what do kids in Riverton do after school? 
Anyone know? Yes, this is the same answer we got <laughs> when we talked to people about this. We would say, what do kids do? And they would always mention, well, some of them do our rep with Mary. We'd say, yes. And they say, well, some of them go to the library. And we knew that too. Um, and they said, but otherwise, we don't know what kids do out of school. We don't know what they do in the summertime. And that's really where we were able to put together a feasibility study to find that there's a great, great opportunity and need here in Riverton for that out of school time, really to, to take that out of school time and develop and, and transform that into time for kids to develop themselves and their abilities and skills. So we started our campaign. We, we, we gathered an advisory council of about 20 members. We started our campaign in 2020. And this exact week last year, we were headed to Riverton. We were going to start our campaign as. We were so excited. And one word. Anybody want to know what that word is? COVID. Oh, yeah, that's my answer for everything right now, by the way. My kids are like, can we go to the park? Oh, no, COVID. <laughs> Can't do that. COVID. Everything now, is, our answer is COVID. But honestly, it stalled us for quite literally a year. Um, Initially, just not being able to even meet people, not being able to travel. Um, and then there was another wave that came through, um, actually came through our organization as well, um, back in November. And then Christmas came and we said, okay, we're really gonna start this. So in January, we started coming back to meetings and um, we're here today to kind of kick everything off. Uh, we haven't really announced it publicly yet. We wanted to kind of do that here today, that we are officially making um, a, a move to start a Boys and Girls Club in August of this year. Okay, we have not given that, that information out, so we asked County 10 to be here to kind of help us announce that. And then also we'll talk about our big kickoff uh, breakfast event here in a little while. Um, we would like to, to start a Boys and Girls Club in August. Of course, the struggle there is that we want to make sure that the funding is available, that we are planned, I'm a strategic planner, that we are funded, and that we are sustainable. Because Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Wyoming recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. And um, I want, when I'm not going to tell you how old, for us to all be able to say, we were here 50 years ago when we started this in Riverton. We want to be sustainable. So we are gonna be working from now until August to, to, to garner those funds and to meet with, with donors and individuals and foundations and groups um, to help with that funding. But that's not the only reason I'm here today. One of the biggest reasons I'm here today is that I want to make advocates out of all of you, okay? Because there are three things we're looking for. Yes, we're looking for folks who will partner with us with funding, but more importantly, we're looking for folks who will get the word out for us. So at the end of today, if you don't feel you are prepared to be an advocate for the Boys and Girls Club, you just come find me and we'll schedule another meeting. <laughs> so again, kind of back to that data piece. Why, why the Boys and Girls Club? So a lot of study, believe it or not, has been done in the last 10 years in after school time. Um, does anyone know when the highest crime rate for youth is in a 24 hour period. Anybody know that the hours? Three to six. Three to six. And why is that? That's what they no do after school. school. That's what they do after school. That's right. Because their parents are probably still working and they don't have somewhere to be engaged and to be learning and to be um, held accountable. And so they're going and finding their own things to do, right? Um, but we also know there's so many other benefits to what, what happens in the after school time. You can see some of them here. That when they studied youth who were heavily involved in the after school program, they increased their school day <coughs> attendance, they had higher grades and better work habits, they had a greater ability to stay on task because at the club we help them to focus on, on things and to find their passion so that they can learn better ways. They achieve better on achievement score tests and they have increased self-esteem and self-confidence. But those who participate what we would call regularly, which is two or more times a week, they actually have even more benefits in their life. They have better relationships with peers and adults because you know what? Success in life isn't just about good grades. Success in life is about being a good person. And those are some of the things that, that we teach through our programs at the club. They have higher grade school, or high school graduation rates. Anybody, by the way, happen to know uh, Wyoming's graduation rate? 72%. What's the national average, do you know? I don't, that'd be a good thing for me to look up. Sorry. I wanna say it's right there. Okay. I, we used to be above, it used to be 75% and we were above, but I think this last that came out was 72%. 
Um, they have greater post-secondary enrollment rates, that's trade school or college, and they have improved levels of college and career readiness. That's an important thing to us. It's not just college readiness, but career readiness. Um, there are lots of different paths that kids can take in their life. And here's some of my favorite data. So every year we do a survey, in fact it's going on right now in our clubs over the next couple of weeks. We ask kids about their club experience, we ask them about their goals and dreams for life. 100% of our club members at Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Wyoming, in a community just this size, we asked them and 100% of them said, I'm going to graduate high school. That's not an accident. That's because we tell them every day when they come in, you're going to graduate high school. You're going to achieve your, your goals. What are your goals? Let's make steps to get to those goals. You are going to get there. And we instill in them that confidence that they can achieve those goals. We also know that at our, our clubs, Central Wyoming, 72% of our youth display high levels of leadership. 66 display excellent levels of integrity. We, we credit that to our boys, our, our Cowboy Ethics Program, which is actually 12% above the national average. 66%, not to show any kind of integrity, but excellent levels of integrity. And 97% of our clubs say that if they saw or had something happening in their lives, they would go to a club member. One of my favorite phrases, and I should figure out who, who originally said this, but I just tell you, I don't know who originally said this, but they said, a child can never have too many people who love them. And that's what we are at the club. We're here to love them to hold them accountable, to push them toward their goals, to teach them fun stuff. We'll see some of those pictures in a minute. And we really do believe at the Boys and Girls Club, we are building the next generation of leaders. We've already seen it. We've seen our youth go out and become involved in, in the political realm, go to college, go into the career, own their own businesses. Um, in fact, we have a, a young man who just came back and is actually giving back to the club because he learned those entrepreneurial skills and has now has his own business. Um, we see those all the time with kiddos. So what do we do? Um, we have, Boys and Girls Clubs of America has a national, nationally recognized and um, evidence-based uh, formula, what we call the formula for impact. Essentially, we take those young people, which in my definition, who's the young people that need us most? Everybody, every child. We add to their life what we call the outcome-driven club experience. We're very intentional. A lot of people will walk in. It may look like mass chaos, but I promise you, it is very intentional. Kids are learning and everything we do has a purpose. Those high yield activities and targeted programs. And what we're aiming for is three things. Academic success, we want them to graduate high school with a plan in hand. And that might be the military, that might be the workforce or trade school or college, whatever their plan is, we want them to graduate high school and have that plan and help them succeed. Number two, we want good character and citizenship. We want them to be involved in their community. We have about 78% of the youth that come to the club volunteer at least once a week, either in the club or in their community. We're building that community sense. And I know that you all connect with that, right, Rotary? Yes, a <laughs> little bit, okay. Um, we also want them to have healthy lifestyles. And that doesn't just mean what am I eating or drinking or am I exercising. That means am I making healthy choices for myself? Am I making healthy choices in the people that I hang out with? Am I making healthy choices in the things that I watch on television or the computer usage that I have? Um, three priority outcomes. So I'll just show you a few fun pictures. Academic success, we recently built a brand new tech center at our Boys and Girls Clubs um, in Casper, where they have augmented reality, virtual reality, 40 computer stations, and soon we will have maker stations. Um, we, we campaigned in our community for that, and our community stepped up and helped us to build that for kiddos because there was some crazy, Amy helped me out with that data, that like 85% of the jobs that will exist in 20 years don't even exist right now. Oh wow. So we want children to be ready for the future, but just in case, I'm not a person that likes to sit kids in front of a screen a lot. I think there's so many other ways, and we do as well as a club. <clears throat> These girls over here are making ice cream. Shh, don't tell the healthy lifestyles people, but they're making ice cream in Science Club. And right over here, this young man was in reading club and they're making this little squirrel guy and he's putting them together using art to help kiddos to learn to read. So academic success comes in lots of different forms at the club. Character and citizenship, as I said before, it's important for us that kids learn to give back and to take care of their community. So our little gal in the center here, um, we had a work day where they all helped to clean the club because it's their club. It's not my club, it's their club. 
So they all worked and they have lots of pictures of them cleaning. I'm just gonna inundate you with those, but I didn't want anybody to think that that's what we do to kids all day long. I promise it's not, right? Um, this, this young lady actually, this was an activity where they took junk and made it into art, teaching kids to be resourceful and not wasteful with things. Um, and then this is Jenny Ponder. She's our Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Wyoming Youth of the Year. She won a $5,000 scholarship. She was selected at our organization and she will now compete at the state level. Wyoming has a wonderful opportunity. And the winner of the state level for Boys and Girls Clubs Youth of the Year actually gets a full ride scholarship to the University of Wyoming. Uh, we gave, our organization last year gave out over $130,000 in scholarships to our, our youth. Um, so that's Judy Ponder. She will actually represent us at the state competition in the next couple of weeks, I believe. Um, and finally, healthy lifestyles. You know, which could look like Let's get the kids running around doing workout warrior. Boys doing some, some push-ups there. Eating well. Um, our kids get a, a healthy snack. And at one of our club sites, they get a healthy dinner. And at another club site where there's a four-day school week, they get a healthy lunch every day as well when they come. Um, so we want to teach them to eat right, to keep themselves healthy physically. And then down here is our Smart Girls program where we're teaching them to build healthy relationships with girls. But my favorite is probably when we take them outside for a rousing game of hide and seek. I think he nailed it. Don't you think he nailed it? I can see it. I know. Um, so healthy lifestyles encompasses all those pieces. We want to get kids out um, and involved and active, but we also want them to teach, make healthy cho choices for their life as well. So in order to make Boys and Girls Clubs a success in any community, we have to have the foundational support of that community. So we're looking for three things. So today, hopefully, You've learned enough that you can be an advocate for us. If someone asks about this Boys and Girls Club thing, say, it's not a daycare. Repeat after me, Dennis, it's not a daycare. It's not a daycare. Very good, everybody can learn from Dennis. Um, advocates, just letting people know what this is about, that we are here to transform the out of school time into time of development for you. Um, number two, we need volunteers. We will be hiring a full-time director, three part-time, um, youth professionals who will lead the programming, but in order for our clubs to be successful, we need all that other cool stuff that happens outside of our doors to come in. One of our clubs has someone who comes in and does woodworking with the kids and teaches them how to use, use their hands to build things. We have another club that has someone come in and a woman teaches them to crochet. We have a sewing club in Buffalo that donated a bunch of, of um, sewing machines and then came in weekly to teach the kids how to make quilts. Um, so volunteers, we're looking for folks who might have a little interest in building up those leaders of tomorrow and teaching them skills and abilities. And finally, we're looking for funding partners, folks who can help us financially make this a success, um, which leads us to another cool announcement that our breakfast event will happen in April. April 27th um, at 7 a.m., we will have a breakfast event honoring Mary Margaret Stockton. I tell you, every time we said to people, do you have any ideas of who we might be able to honor for our first breakfast? Hers was one of the first names to come up. Um, and just learning all about her and reading her bio, uh, she's an amazing woman and we're going to honor her. There'll be a time of honoring Mary Margaret. We will also hear from keynote speaker Dave Dravecki. Anyone familiar? Um, he's the one who had a cancer in his arm and he's called the pitch heard around the world. He has an incredibly inspiring story. So he will be flying right directly here into Riverton um, on that uh, the day before to, to help us to uh, kick off this Riverton, or actually end our Riverton campaign with a breakfast. Um, the, we are hoping for, what's our AMA, we need 30 tables or 40 tables? Uh, 200 people. 200 people, yeah. whatever that means table-wise. We don't know anymore, right? Tomorrow it could be different. Um, we're aiming at 200 folks in the seats that day to learn about the club, to help support the club. Here's the great thing, there's no cost for a table. The table, we're not gonna ask you for a fee up front. We want you to get your friends, your family, anyone there that you think can help be an advocate for the club and support. And then we just ask everyone in the audience to consider um, a, fun, uh, a financial gift to the Boys and Girls Club as part of that event. Um, so we'd love for you guys to have a table for Rotary. Um, here's the, the brochure, you all have them. I also gave you another little <coughs> extra paper that you can give to a friend. If you don't have any, you can make one, just hand it out, okay? Um, we'd love for you to invite anyone and everyone you know to maybe have a rotary table or a table for your business or your family to come support the club, 
learn what it is that we have going on, to honor Mary Margaret, hear a really great speaker, and just help us kick this initiative off in Riverton um, to make this a success um, for us to be able to start in August. So I think, did I talk too fast? Am I good? I think you're two minutes early. I'm two minutes early. I can take two minutes worth of questions if anyone has any questions about the club. So you all feel like you can be advocates. Yes, Reed. How many kids are we going to serve? Um, yeah, so our goal within the first year is to serve 100 members. We have been told that that is shooting way low. At first it was, oh, 50 to 60, then it was 75, then it was, you'll see, well over 100 kids. And then someone else said, oh, no, I look for you to be at about 200 within a year. And I was like, whoa, let's just go ahead and get this started first. Um, <clears throat> our goal is 100 members in the first year um, because we want to be able to do this. Like I said, not only do we want to be sustainable, but we want to be able to provide the programming in a way that's going to be safe and impactful for you. Um, as we grow, we will hopefully be able to grow into other clubs uh, around the this, this city. We will start in one in Willow Mitch. We have an MOU with the school district. They'll help to provide transportation. Um, we will be in the, club, the school site there and, and utilize their facility so kids can come directly to the club. Do you have, do you break the kids out in different sized groups and then are they classified on age or how does that work? Yeah, so our, our elementary sites serve K through five. Some of the programming, like our power hour, homework, help, and tutoring, is usually aimed at age groups. So you have kindergarten and first graders together because your kindergartners are gonna have much different academic needs than your kindergartners. Some of our programming is aimed for all ages. Um, and so it just depends on what the program they're running, what the, what the needs of that particular population are, and the school setting that we're in, the space that we have, split into two or three different groups as they go through five. Have you found the place yet? Uh, yes, so originally we will start in Rendezvous Elementary. We'll use that facility for now. Um, as we grow, and, and because we're told that there's a need and we desire to grow, um, we may end up reaching out into other schools as agreed by the school district, or if there are other facilities available, we would consider that at the time. So yeah, to start off with, starting in a school is, is really great for us because they're, the kids are already right there. It's a familiar setting. The school district is going to do it without any charge to us, so that helps us to stay sustainable and keep any, any parental fees very low. Um, <clears throat> and then we will, uh, and also the teachers are right there. One of my favorite stories when I was a branch director is I had two little boys in fourth grade who came every single day. Everybody else had homework except these two boys. I kept saying, boys, get your homework out. Oh, we don't have any. <laughs> you really don't. I kept looking at all the other fourth graders the next day. Get your homework. Oh, we don't have any homework. And they, they'd agree with, oh, no, uh -huh, we don't have any, any, any homework. None. But if that's okay, let's go ahead and talk to your teacher. So we walked right on down to Mr. H's office and the boys are hanging their heads. And they get down and I said, Mr. H, these boys are telling me they don't have any homework. And he walks right over and pulls out the floor. As a matter of fact, they have three days worth of homework and they handed it to them and they hung their heads and looked back. But we have those teachers right there in the building um, to be able to communicate with and to be able to partner with what they're doing. And if they're, if they're doing spelling words, we would be helping with spelling words. If they're doing a science experiment, we would be helping. So that partnership is really key for us, especially to start out. Okay. All right, with that. Any other questions?